Hi guys, this is Seth. Welcome back to Warhawk Defense. In the ongoing conflict between Ukraine and Russia, a recent strike by Ukrainian forces on a Russian command ship in the Dnipro River has stirred up considerable speculation. While Russian telegram channels are abuzz with rumors about the presence of a prominent Russian general on board, we at Warhawk Defense refrain from speculating without concrete evidence. Strike on the ship, which was presumably used as Russian base or observation point. The ship ended up there as a result of a dam destruction on the left bank in Kherson region. There are rumors that the infamous Russian blogger 13th was on board. If so, he'd left behind 200,000 followers on Telegram. Footage of the destruction by Ukrainian pilots of an enemy control center located on the ship was shown by the commander of the Air Force of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. HIMARS destroyed the newest Russian electronic warfare system, Palantin, Zaporizhia direction. This complex allows not only to suppress various communications in a front line up to 1,000 kilometers wide, but also to fight drones at a distance of up to 20 kilometers. It can coordinate the work of other electronic warfare systems. The complex completed military tests and entered service with the occupiers in 2019. Warriors of the Great Russian Empire are collecting condensate from the ceiling in a cellar to have at least some drinking water. They're paid $1,700 per month for this. И потом у нас будет как бы это кальций не собирай, а то камни в почках образуются. Сколько мы уже пескали? Да, кстати, потом на зубах скрипит долго почему-то. Вроде уже все это слюнями разбавил. А то там все скрипит и скрипит. А в соседних развалинах банка из подшпаклевки низко. Собираем дождевую воду каплю. Вот моя броня висит. Это прилично набрал, можно сказать. Да. Так, кружки есть, да? да. <laughs> Russian instructor describes Putin's tactics to the west of Avdiivka highlighting significant operational difficulties despite reported progress, particularly at the orlivka toninki axis. The lack of coordination and communication among units leads to confusion and disorganization on the ground, resulting in ineffective offensives and unnecessary risks for troops. As for the orlivka toninki section, the picture here is also never good, despite the steady progress. As an illustration, I will provide evidence from the operational direction Severn, Tonenka, as of the first days of March. I think this will be much clearer than general words about the degradation of the culture of staff work, poor training of command staff, poor organization and security, and lack of proper coordination and interaction. So I quote, Yesterday I returned from Severn. We were providing at least some comms for the unit. I can say that our offensive is completely fucked up. All the basements are occupied. People are sitting like rats. There are many units. And not only is there no interaction between them, they often don't even understand who is sitting a hundred meters away from them. The surveillance system works well for one group out of five. I looked for my unit for almost an hour. No one knows anything. You stupidly walk around the destroyed village and yell for your own people, hoping that they will hear. It's such a mess there. And at the same time, everyone is driven into Tonenka in small groups. Why, what for, how to interact? Hell knows. They stupidly drive people in just to report. People are streaming towards Tonenke, sometimes under fire. The rare people who go back say there is nothing to do there. 
People are like sardines in a barrel. All the basements and dugouts are occupied. They tell me directly on the radio. Just indicate that you are there. There will be a check, after which you roll back. This is all purely for reporting that such and such units participated in the capture. The second task after comms was to find and pick up our dead. The boys died stupidly. The dismount point was indicated too close to the enemy. They immediately fell under mortars and were scattered. All because the task from above was put down like this. Go, here is a point on the map. You'll figure it out for yourself. I'm not complaining. There were our problems there too. There's no point in taking our word for it and going in without reconnaissance. But the problem is that they force people to move without even giving them time to organize the movement. Like, you have three hours? Do it. Is it even necessary to somehow further explain how much such organization of the process affects the excessiveness of the cost of these very movements? What else I would like to note? The enemy is now most obviously fighting for recognizable names of specific locations. And this in itself is quite good, since it allows us to grind him and not just be ground ourselves. Meanwhile, the enemy's line of defense based on the terrain, even if insufficiently equipped and fortified, can still play a role. Here, the terrain favorable to defense is not limited to water barriers. Those same named locations will primarily become reference points for official reports and media messages. Secondly, these locations have basements that provide shelter. But these locations are located in our beloved, sudden, and inescapable lowlands. In general, the capture of the entire line Berdichi, Semyonovka, Orlovka, Tonenkoye, fits into the logic of the development of the offensive. But this is still an intermediate stage, and it is very important not to get stuck at this stage with unit numbers instead of units. And with such an organization of the offensive, this is never an impossible prospect. Will it be possible to take the adjacent heights to the west after these locations? Or will our infantry sit sadly in the basements? Basements, of course, are more reliable than holes in the ground, but hanging in the lowlands by definition puts troops in a disadvantageous and vulnerable position. If you still manage to reach the heights and gain a foothold on them, will the group have any strength left for further active actions? In the worst case scenario, a group can generally be grounded in these same locations with names and then hit from the heights to no avail. Cheerful reports about minimal losses may of course please the royal ear, but words cannot replace people and equipment on earth. And you can't take Ocheretino as a report. By the way, I don't quite understand why Orlovka and Toninkoya were the priority for the group advancing in this zone. The prospects there are bleak. In the current context, Berdichi looks more interesting. The Ukrainian film 20 Days in Mariupol, which was shot inside the besieged port city during the assault by Russian forces, has won the Best Documentary Oscar at the Academy Awards in Los Angeles. The director of the film, Mstislav Chernov, said from the stage that he is probably the first director who would like to never make his film. Thanks everyone for watching this video. Despite current obstacles, Ukraine is continuing to strike Russian target with great precision. Stay with Warhawk Defense, comment, like, subscribe, become our member and stay strong. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.